It's modern fiction about war and political conflict, but it's told in the form of absurdist horror stories. Better than food, man. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Better Than Food Book Reviews. I'm your host, Clifford Lee Sargent. Great to see you as always. Hope you're doing well. Get that coffee. Please excuse the hair, I just kind of uh, gave up. Today's video is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. These things are awesome. They are light, sleek, industrial, holds up to 12 cards, plus room for cash on the back. Got a cash strap there. You could either have the strap or the clip. I think it's pretty awesome. Options are good. Doesn't fold or awkwardly bulge in your back pocket and it has seriously changed up my whole pocket situation and freed up some much needed space. Please do not sit on these. These are meant to go into your front pocket. This is the carbon fiber 3K weave model. It's pretty sweet. It's got kind of like this trippy pattern there. They also have these matching knives with the same pattern. It's pretty cool. They also come in this alternative carbon fiber pattern and uh, in burnt titanium, which is pretty dope. They have a ton of awesome patterns like this one, which is called the, the Damascus model. They have this awesome topographic model, very cool. And they even have this super fancy one, which is 18 karat gold plated. I admit it's my favorite. The durable material means that each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. You could buy this one wallet and carry it for life. In fact, the Rich team is so confident you'll like it, they'll let you test drive it for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. This wasn't enough to win you over yet? Check out the 30,000 five-star reviews. For the record, just for me personally, they have been a fantastic company to work with. They are super hands-off, they have been very cool. I really appreciate them, so thank you, Ridge. Get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com forward slash better than food and using the discount code better than food. The link is below. Thanks a bunch. Also, if you'd be so kind as to check out the Amazon store that I have linked below, that's a collection of all the books, uh, or not all, but I'm, I'm adding to it. Many of the books that I've reviewed and recommended, and uh, this book will be going in there. Anything you purchase from there, the show gets a kickback, and I really appreciate it. Today is The Madman of Freedom Square by Hassan Blasim, translated by Jonathan Wright. This is a gift from uh, Tim Grayson, the Neil Gaiman approved poet from England. I'm going to shamelessly plug his book of poetry here, his selected work from 2003 to 2020. Seriously, like Neil Gaiman carries around his poetry apparently, it's like, it's, it's kind of a trip. <laughs> that is a, a, an illustration with a couple of mermaids on the front there. If one were to look closer, that is a mermaid. Uh, it looks like she is tonguing a femur bone, which is quite interesting. I will inspect that, so thank you Tim, I really appreciate it. He is also the Poet in residence at uh, Belvoir Castle in England, which uh, is this incredibly, they have an Instagram, you ought to check it out. And he gave me an invite to go and uh, check out the castle. And that's kind of amazing. I've always wanted a castle. So I might be able to go over there to England and hang out with him and uh, pretend for a minute like I have some sort of reason to be there. But uh, yeah, thank you very much. Regardless, Tim, I really appreciate it. Hope you and yours are doing well in this period of absolute catastrophe. So he sent this collection of uh, short stories to me and uh, I enjoyed it very much. This is a dark collection of modern fiction published in 2009 centered around the experience of refugees and the war in Iraq. The Guardian, the paper, uh, has said that Blasim is perhaps the best writer of Arabic fiction alive. And there's a great interview with Blasim below where I uh, got most of the following information. Hassan Blasim is an author, poet, and filmmaker who was born in Baghdad but escaped to Finland as a refugee through a long and arduous journey that took approximately, I think, three years or so. His real life experiences make their way into his fiction, and one gets the impression that, plainly put, he has seen some really dark, fucked up shit, and that this isn't even, this isn't even half of it. These are war stories told as horror stories. Blasim is critical of Islam, he was critical of Saddam Hussein, and occasionally his writing is kind of coarse and uncensored and, and uh, vulgar. So it's no surprise that this book was banned in many Arabic countries. This is his first book, and I believe he had another one that came out recently called God 99, which is a reference to, you know, the 99 names of Allah. Uh, so excited to read that one. During his time in Iraq as a filmmaker, he had various problems with uh, the secret police. And you know, his descriptions of these secret police, you know, like even in, in colleges. I mean, can you imagine? Just like the paranoia. Pinchonian. So this is how the story goes, I think. After moving to northern Iraq, Kurdistan, and uh, changing his name to a, a Kurdish one to, to you know, avoid problems for his family back in Iraq, and then again having problems with the secret police for some, for some work he did that was criticizing Saddam Hussein, he went to Iran, paid some mafia people, and escaped. 
which is apparently how you do this sort of thing. If you're a refugee and you want to, and you want to uh, GTFO, which let's be honest, might be just, you know, highly advisable, you pay the mafia. And it doesn't always work, apparently. That's the, uh, that's the issue. This is a naive Westerner's um, interpretation of, uh, you know, these accounts. But uh, yeah, it doesn't always work. So you could get screwed on a deal. You could wait a long ass time, pay a guy a bunch of money, and then you get dropped off in um, Bulgaria and beaten and, and stuck in a cold river. I think that's, that's a firsthand account from him on what happened. You know, they caught them on the border. I don't know if it was Serbia or Bulgaria, but they caught them on the border in these woods, I think. And then they like, they, he was in a group of guys and um, they got caught by the border guards. In the winter time, the border guards are lazy. You can strategically do this, according to him, apparently, sometimes. Beaten, stuck in a, like a, like a pond or a river or something in, in like just above freezing for like half an hour or something. Basically as a warning, like don't do this. I mean, can you imagine? It's just fucking terrible. Anybody who is willing to fight that hard to live though, I mean, you kind of got to respect that will to survive. So I think that's how the story goes. I hope I got it right. So after a long journey, he's been in Finland for quite some time. So it's got a little bit of a happy ending there. Kind of jealous. I kind of want to go to Scandinavia, but those taxes, that's where they get you. The secret police thing sounds terrifying, you know? It's just like, it's enough to make anybody super Pinchonian paranoid. Constantly being monitored, tracked, observed, watched. Hmm, right, right. But yeah, anyways, The Madman of Freedom Square, this collection of short stories. Whoa. First impressions, Hassan Blasim kind of makes me nervous actually, in a good way. That's the point of his stories. But still, it's a very unusual thing these days. I, I, I like to think I've built up a pretty tough, thick literary skin. But this guy has something and it's unsettling. There's definitely a quiet element of someone like Poe in Blossom's work. Um, that comparison has probably been made a lot before, probably Kafka too. The stories are horror stories, but um, it's a blend. It's a blend of, of realism and surrealism or absurdity or whatever you want to call it. They're largely composed from real life events as well as things that are, that have elements of magical realism or are kind of fantastical or surreal. They're lifted from war-torn environments or depict situations that are in themselves horrific, yet most disturbingly of all, believable. It's modern fiction about war and political conflict, but it's told in the form of absurdist horror stories with kind of unreliable narrators. It's pretty genius, I gotta say. It's quite unique. Although if I remember correctly, it's, it's much more about the refugee experience and people who are not, you know, soldiers in conflict, but rather people who are living with the reality of war, with the horrifying events that they experience due to the war. Really, for all these characters, it's, it's, uh, the, the, the recurring theme is, is just being hurled into chaos. Blasine also wastes no words. He's, um, he's quite economical. The stories in themselves are only a few pages each, in and out. Some do, however, take on the kind of um, quality of Kafka. He also reminds me, interestingly enough, of Roland Toper, the French author, actor, cartoonist, or illustrator uh, who wrote The Tenant. He played a Renfield in uh, Herzog's Nosferatu. And interestingly, Blasim kind of resembles Topper. They, they both have these, um, these, these very expressive eyes and eyebrows. Uh, I, thought, I just thought that was curious. There's a particular photo I'm thinking of though, uh, where, where um, Topper's wearing a top hat and uh, Blasim, he's actually, it's a great photo. I think it's on his website. It's just him staring up at you uh, from what appears to be a, a grave, uh, six feet under. You know, there's a grass and then there's a hole and he's just staring up at you. It's perfect. That's kind of the thing with Blasim. That, you know, that kind of base death, a real confrontation with death. He's staring right out of the grave back at you. That's what the short stories are like. It's really a confrontation with um, just kind of the grimness of these environments and situations and characters. It's just like, his stories just demonstrate the bleakness of the whole thing. I think, I think this one Amazon review was like, you know, it's like the indefatigable human spirit or courage or something like that. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Him, yes, but the stories themselves, they're very bleak, but good, real good. And the nightmare of Carlos Fuentes actually shares more than one thing in common with uh, the tenant. It must be an homage or, or, or at least totally inspired by it. And if he doesn't admit that he was inspired by it, then it's definitely unconscious because, because it's, it's the same story, basically. Very, very similar story. The whole thing about like identity and trying to kill your old self and all this stuff. But, but it's a very unique, compelling, 
twist on it. Th this, this refugee from Iraq goes to the Netherlands and uh, he, he marries a Dutch woman. He, he tries to hide, basically, by taking on a name of, uh, a, a, uh, taking on a, a Mexican name because of his, his skin tone, so he, he won't be immediately uh, recognized as uh, an Iraqi. Uh, so maybe he'll be safe from those who want to kill him for betraying their country, escaping his country, or whatever they might accuse him of, acts of betrayal or whatever. So he takes on the name of Carlos Fuentes, because he sees it in a paper, who I, who I reviewed not too long ago, which is funny. I reviewed The Old Gringo, which is about the writer Ambrose Bierce. So he becomes Carlos Fuentes, you know, this guy Carlos Fuentes. It's a little bit humorous to kind of read about, you know. I wouldn't be surprised if it was actually an homage to it. Certain stories feature dreams or surreal, fantastic realities. Thinking of the corpse exhibition in particular here, although very, very morbid. Some of it definitely drifts into the realm of the absurd. Um, Ali's bag is about a man who travels across borders uh, carrying a bag filled with his mother's bones. Now one could get the impression that this is all a recipe for depressing, grisly short fiction, no doubt. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Dana Patrick Kelly just sent me a box full of Thomas Ligotti, so we've got no shortage. Thank you, Dana. But there's one component that makes Blossim's work true to life, and that is the very strange addition of an almost cosmically nihilistic humor, which it just brings it to a whole new level. Um, take the first story, for example. Perhaps my favorite of them all. Not, not that it's downhill from there or anything, it's just like, just out of all of them, when I think about it, the weird Aki Karasmaki humor to it is just like, just, and just kind of like how pathetic humans are. It's just like how bleak the situation is and how just like dumb all of it really is. It's just terrific. You're just like, ah, you're going there? Ah, he did? All right, well, buckle up. This first short story is called The Reality and the Record. And it's about a refugee who arrives in Sweden and uh, tells his story. Previously, he was an ambulance driver who uh, one day was uh, driving around uh, six decapitated bodies and their heads in a burlap sack. And then he was kidnapped by these people who are impersonating police or something. So they kidnap him, they beat him up, they stick him in a car, and they take him somewhere and he thinks he's gonna be beheaded. And uh, sure enough, they get to this place and it's like a snuff film setup, you know, where they have like the banner or whatever with the, with the thing that they're saying. And then there's the severed heads and he, you know, there's a camera. He's forced to read this piece of paper uh, as though he were an Iraqi officer in the army and confess to all this, all this fucked up shit that the Iraqi army has done. They have like, you know, these murders and these rapes and these crimes and he's forced to say all of this uh, impersonating this guy. Confess to all these horrible crimes that the army did in this kind of beheading video setup. And there's like the severed heads right next to him. But here's the thing, they shoot the video and he's convincing and succeeds at the gig, so to speak. So much so that the kidnappers start treating him really well. As the video is picked up by the news and the ploy goes through for the kidnappers and Everybody's convinced that it's real. So then he's sold as an actor to the next group, which, the, the, same story. They beat him up, they take him somewhere, and he has to play this role, and he has to do this thing, making him act in front of a camera for a different role, confessing to things that he has nothing to do with. And in what may be one of the darkest of comedies, this farce just continues from group to group. At one point, he asks one of these groups uh, for money because he thinks at this point, you know, his acting is pretty good. And they beat the shit out of him. And I just thought that was great. So it's like pitch black comedy as commentary, right? And I thought that was just kind of genius. The second story is my other favorite, which is, uh, which is kind of an almost um, more of the Poe-esque type short story. It's about a man who plagiarizes and publishes the stories, um, the brilliant stories that he comes across of a dead soldier under his own name. It becomes wildly successful. These stories are just brilliant, 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 brilliant. But then, more of these stories start arriving at his house. These new stories arrive, and then more stories arrive. And this dead soldier is sending him these stories. Where, where they're coming from, he doesn't know. So much so that he starts, he has to, he has to rent a, a warehouse, you know, filled with all these stories, and uh, he has to start incinerating them. It's a, quite a thing. Excellent, totally eerie. This is the beginning of that. It was interesting, because it's uh, being told by, uh, I believe it's being told by a dead man. I have to read it again. There's something going on here which I didn't quite understand in the end. Like, like, there's there's another layer to this story that I don't think I'm getting, but it's but it's quite interesting. But I thought this uh, this intro really kind of gives an uh, it's a good example of Blasim's style. An army newspaper, and it's dedicated to the dead of the Iran Iraq War, 1980 through 88, and that is a very interesting war too. It's like 500,000 soldiers died or something, and it was a stalemate. Uh, according to Wikipedia, it says that both both sides said that they won. You just wonder how that many people 
can die in battle and nothing comes of it anyways. We're, we're dealing with that right now, aren't we? We will go to the cemetery, to the mortuary, and ask the guardians of the past for permission. We'll take the dead man out to the public garden naked and set him on the platform under the ripe orange sun. We'll try to hold his head in place. An insect, a fly, buzzes around him, although flies buzz equally around the living and the dead. We'll implore him to repeat the story to us. There's no need to kick him in the balls for him to tell the story honestly and impartially because the dead are usually honest, even the bastards among them. Interesting, no? It's compelling. It's a, it's a very good, good first paragraph. Several of them are better than others, but uh, I'll give you the ones that I recommend. The third is the uh, truck to Berlin, which pulls a bit from Blasim's uh, experience as a refugee uh, traveling across borders in groups. These guys are loaded in the back of a truck together, uh, supposedly uh, with a trustworthy individual at the wheel. Uh, he, has a, he has a good reputation as a smuggler um, of refugees, so to speak. I think it's like 35 men sitting in the dark in the back of this truck on this journey with uh, food and, and little else, waiting, 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 waiting. And then something happens. There's some sort of, uh, of commotion and they feel the truck turn around. And eventually it just comes to a complete stop and the driver leaves and they're left there, wherever they are, for days, locked inside. Being locked inside is actually a recurring theme in Blossom's work in this collection at least, whether locked inside a physical place, a country, or one's own history, one's own mind. He shares that with Poe, sort of, in that Poe's recurring motif was the idea of being buried alive. That was the thing with Poe. And I'm going to review some Poe, uh, in, probably around, around Halloween, we'll see. Uh, I think I'm gonna review my favorite Poe short story of all time, but uh, let that be a surprise. Unfortunately, the truck to Berlin has this kind of, um, you know, actual horror story twist at the end, which I can't, Decide if I love or hate. I'd be interested to hear your opinions. I won't spoil it. And the final story, which is called That Inauspicious Smile, is about a man who suddenly cannot stop smiling, which gets him into all kinds of trouble. At first, kind of humorously, but then not. Uh, after he walks into a bar for neo-Nazis. Yeah, that, that doesn't go well. Ultimately, if one was looking for hope about the current state of affairs politically over there, wh whether that's Iraq or, or Europe or you know, even here, uh, though there's no stories that take place in America, I don't think, or just about human nature in general, one is definitely looking in the wrong place. But that's the kind of fiction I go for. Not hopeful, powerful, real, authentic. Yeah, which Blasim most assuredly is. He's had a very interesting life and he's, he's created something uh, terrific with his real life experience. And he has a great sense of humor, you know, after all is said and done in the kind of Jesus that's awful, but, but life's a bitch sort of thing. It's not nihilistic, it's just unflinching, right? It's just real. Even when it's surreal, it's just kind of real. I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. Is it better than food? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I would give it like a four out of five stars. It was a fine short story collection. I would, I would read it again. It was a unique perspective from someone I'd never read before. It's a dark, brutal, unflinching, clever black comedy with absurdist tones and sometimes disorienting or confusing. Like there's, like there's another layer. There, there's things in there, there's things in there that I did not get on the first read that, that I was like, well, what? There's some things that are still confusing. So there's a couple I'll actually have to go back and reread to fully understand. And it's a fast read too, definitely good for the weekend. And I do recommend it. But he seems to be one of the only authors I've read currently writing who has the ability to write something that will have a profound impact on me. And I'm really uh, looking forward to, to reading the other things he's put out. I think this guy is definitely worth checking out if you're into uh, Kafka or Poe especially. If you're into The Tenant by Roland Topper, absurdism, surrealism, any of that stuff. Even Borges. I would even say if you like Lovecraft stuff, maybe this is, this is up your alley. Uh, I get some of those vibes. So thanks a bunch, Tim. I really enjoyed it. Cheers. Yes, I highly recommend this one. And you can find it in the link below. And if you use the link below, the show gets a kickback. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Coffee time. For those of you who are new, welcome. I take the names of all the patrons on Patreon who have donated $5 or more per video to the show. I place their names in this mason jar. And for each review I do, I pull out a name and whoever's name I pull out is sent a hard copy of the book I'm reviewing, plus a bag of coffee roasted by yours truly. And the coffee is delicious. It's an Ethiopian right now. It's fantastic. If you would like to get in on that and help support the show, you can go to patreon.com forward slash books to better than food and donate $5 or more per video. Thank you very much. 
And if you donate one dollar more per video, you'll get access to the patron-only reviews, the Discord channel, and the Better Than Friday newsletter that I send out every Friday, which is just a list of five different things I'm interested in at any given time. Could be books in the pipeline, music, films, reviews, articles, all kinds of stuff. Changes week to week. If you think we have similar taste, I think you'll enjoy that. Unfortunately, international shipping is not included. Sorry about that. Best of luck to all the patrons, and thank you so much. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Jason, Jason S. Thank you very much, Jason. I really appreciate it. You're going to receive The Madman, A Freedom Square by Hassan Blasim, plus a bag of delicious coffee. Hope you enjoy. Thank you so much. Also, these bookmarks are available uh, for $4 each. They're just my face with a little reminder, and uh, I'm happy to sign them if you like. I don't have a website up yet. You can just hit me up using the email below or uh, DM me on Instagram. They've been kind of popular. I actually, I have to order more of them. <laughs> So, uh, so if you, if you place an order, please, uh, if you could have a little patience, I'd appreciate that. They should be arriving at the end of the month here, but, uh, yeah, it, it was, it was surprising. So thank you to everybody who has purchased some bookmarks. It's, it's, I'm, I'm kind of shocked and I really appreciate it. So I hope you're enjoying them and getting some good use out of them. To, uh, I might continue with this trend. I might start releasing different bookmarks from time to time. Could be fun. We'll see. All right, that's all I've got for you today. Please always remember to bring a book wherever you go. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves. Have a great night. Talk to you soon. Ciao.